Located in the heart of Dublin's north inner city, One Place has provided acute paediatric care for almost 140 years. A home from home which offers safety at times of uncertainty. This building tells a story of hope, determination and strength. And tonight, we go behind its doors to share the stories from the theatres and wards, to meet the staff who dedicate their lives to the care of Ireland's children, and to follow the journey of families and their little patients who are in need of vital and life-saving treatment. Welcome to Temple Street Children's Hospital. Street. In the hospital's intensive care unit, three-month-old Mark is sleeping peacefully. We knew there was an issue before he was born. The doctors down at CUH, they immediately took him away and tried to see which would they be able to put a tube down his, um, his food pipe, but they, they couldn't, so they knew there was blockage. After his birth, doctors in Cork discovered complications with Mark's airway. And in the first few days of life, Mark was transferred from Cork to Dublin to undergo surgery. He's had a few challenges uh, since he's been born, um, emanating from a condition where the trachea and the esophagus, basically the windpipe and the, and the esophagus are connected. Often when there's an operation for, on the trachea at that size, there can be a weakness in the, in the structure or the, the wall of the trachea, which makes it less, uh, more amenable to collapse. After an intensive operation, Mark's airway was of concern. Still at a formative stage, its inner wall was soft and without assistance could close over. There's just a narrowing in his windpipe, so if they were to take out the, the ventilator, he would probably start to deset again um, very quickly. He wouldn't be able to breathe. For Mary, it has been a tough and anxious time. Husband Finbar is in Cork, looking after Mark's twin and their other two children. And, any day now, Mark will need to be brought back to theatre. The medical team have also discovered vessels from Mark's heart to his lungs, which need investigation in Crumlin Hospital before concentrating on his airway. There is an abnormal connection between the, uh, the heart and the, and the pulmonary circulation. Until we understand what is the lesion in his cardiac system or in his pul cardiopulmonary circulation, um, we'll probably wait till that is identified and diagnosed before we proceed to go and see what's going on in his trachea. He, he has to have his trachea properly imaged so that we can understand what type of respiratory support he's going to need. A surgeon will look at the trachea through a camera which will identify where the abnormality on his trachea is and what type of support he needs to keep his trachea open. Often kids will grow out of that over a period of time, but while they're small, that, that type of uh, problem with his trachea will remain a significant challenge for him. That's what you focus on really is getting him better, and you kind of try to stay focused and try to stay positive, so that will relate to him. Which was for the positive energy to him. Accident and emergency, a little girl named Alex has been quickly transferred to the resuscitation room. Quick pinch, Alex. Yeah. She's only in here uh, last week. Last week she was in overnight. She's been in a few times, all right. Yeah. She's diabetic, so uh, she's in for um, high ketones. Ketones have gone high, so uh, it makes her very sick. They're, they're like poisons. 
in the blood. Um, when the blood sugars go go up, they form these um, things called ketones. They make you quite sick. You know, so that's it's kind of the simple, kind of simple way I can kind of understand it. Like you know, and it can actually uh, damage the kidneys and it can get very, very sick, very, very damaging. You know, and that's when she has to come into hospital. Now she'll have to be put on a drip. Alex presented today with vomiting and when children with um, diabetes vomit, they find it hard to maintain their levels, their blood levels. Children with diabetes, their um, glucose can go up or it can go down and they have to monitor that regularly at home and also they have another thing called ketones which is what they have to monitor as well. When sugar levels go up to a certain level, they have to check their ketones. And if children with diabetes have a high sugar level and high ketones, it can be quite serious. And children with diabetes can get something called DKA, which is diabetic ketone acidosis. And that's a, really a medical emergency, and we would treat children very quickly who present with those symptoms. So we can have children who are already diabetics presenting with DKA, or we can have children who um, are newly diagnosed and that's how they present and they can present quite unwell and they would be nursed in our resuscitation room. There's a lot of intervention so it can be very scary for especially if it's a child who's just newly been diagnosed it can be and for the parents as well it's, it's quite intense but the important thing is to stabilize the patient so we brought her in and we got her bloods done and we popped a little IV cannula in that we call Freddy it's we really just leave a little straw in their hand and we can access bloods or we can give them fluids that they need if they're not able to tolerate it. So often they'll be vomiting, so we'd have to give them some um, fluids with sugars and salts in it on a particular level, depending on what their blood levels are telling us. She's diagnosed uh, a year in February. A total change lifestyle. Like she has to eat at a certain times, she has to eat certain things, and she has to eat a certain amount of uh, carbohydrates with each meal, with each snack. You know, she has to eat by the clock and it's just a total lifestyle change. Like. It's Alex Robbins. Is your birthday the 3rd of April? Is it 2003? So that makes you what? Makes you seven, is it? Meanwhile, over in the day ward, Rory has arrived with his mum. It's like a little small tube, very tiny, that's inserted. I think it's above the eardrum. Just pop them in to the two ears, but they need to be um, under anaesthetic so they'll stay still. It's supposed to drain the fluid. He has glue ear, it's what it's called. It's just fluid in the ears. You all ready? I've been told, even tomorrow, you'd notice an improvement. I definitely, after I found out he'd failed the hearing test, I did start to kind of notice it more. I became more aware of it and um, definitely would be hiring up the tally to very loud. You know, you'd have to ask him quite a few times to do something and I, I didn't really put that down to his hearing, but afterwards I started to kind of realise that maybe he wasn't hearing everything we were saying. I've been saying that to him for a while before he got the hearing test. You know, what, stop, like lower down that tally, that's way too loud and not realising now that, you know, he actually couldn't hear it. I'm a bit nervous because uh, none of my children have ever had any surgery, even though I know it's, it's a very minor procedure. Do you know number two? Consultant surgeon Miss Rowley will be in theatre with Rory today. Children get fluid building up in their middle ears and it can cause problems such as decreased hearing, which Rory has. Um, some other children will have lots of ear infections and some children will have a combination of the two, or some children may have speech problems. It depends on the age of the child, but in, in Rory's situation, she felt when she was calling him that he couldn't hear her. Uh, some children will say what a lot. Some children will turn up the TV. Uh, some children, the parents will feel that uh, the child is ignoring them, which is very rarely the case. And some parents will describe that the child may have selective hearing. Uh, sometimes if the condition is there for long enough, a child may fall behind in their uh, schooling, so teachers may notice it at school. She's just going in here around the corner. Can you hear your teacher in school? What? Can you hear your teacher in school? Never.
few days later and upstairs in the ICU, Mark is ready to be transferred to Crumlin, where his heart condition will be investigated further. He has serious problems, but he's in a stable condition right now. And he's continuing to grow because we're able to feed him. Uh, he's getting all of his nutrition. He's in a good place, but we, the next step is a, is a big step. And we have to collect all the, the information to be able to make a recommendation to his family. It's very important that we bring the parents along with us and so that, that they understand what the complexities are. He'll go hopefully to the cath lab, that he'll have a, a general anaesthetic and the cardiologist will image his, his vascular bed or the vascular tree in, in his lungs and also measure the pressures in his lungs. Hopeful that they can close the vessel connected to his lungs, the surgical team would then be able to examine Mark's airway. The procedure can take anywhere from two to four hours. They can be quite complex. The second thing would be then is the trachea, and the trachea would again would be under a general anaesthetic. An ear, nose and throat surgeon will take a look into his trachea and will identify if it looks like an hourglass, for example, or if, if his trachea opens and closes with the respiratory cycle. It would be very interesting to see does it completely close over when he breathes out and what support in terms of ventilation he needs to get to keep it open. That will be a key piece of information to, to determine whether he comes off the respirator or is able to manage with just giving him supplemental oxygen therapy. Hopefully he'll come back. Um, we're not sure what the plan is. When he gets to there, they'll review him and assess him and he might be for surgery tomorrow. You have to be experienced in transferring him too. That tube is his airway. If that went, it's an emergency. Say his blood pressure dropped, say his heart rate dropped, say his sugar dropped. Say that tube comes out, you have to be prepared, you have to have another tubes ready. So a doctor and a nurse will always go with them as well. In the accident and emergency department, Alex continues to be observed closely by the medical team. We do our bloods now um, every hour. Yeah, maybe we'll be getting a bit of insulin to make those horrible ketones go away. It just happens um, from time to time, you know, the, the bloods go high and the ketones just appear. You know, it's the ketones, very, you can't really prevent them, like you do everything. You do everything properly, like um, you keep the bloods down, but the ketones just disappear. Like. If the sugar level is very high, we won't give them any sugar, obviously, in their fluids, and we'll be checking them regularly and checking their blood quite regularly when they're coming in initially, maybe every hour, and we'll be checking their bloods that often and titrating the fluids, giving them a little bit of sugar if their sugar is coming down. It's very, very slow and gradual, and very much dependent on what the child is doing and how they're coping with it. The decision will be made whether Alex is well enough to go home and I suppose fight the illness that she has at home or whether she needs the support in the hospital. Feel well again. The diabetic team would, would in, you know, instill in parents the importance of knowing how sick she can get, I suppose, without trying to scare people either, but to know when they need to seek help. The vast majority of children with diabetes have a, thing, have a form called type 1 diabetes. And type 1 diabetes is a condition where the pancreas stops working. So under normal circumstances, when you or I eat our dinner and our, we absorb our food, food is broken down into the components, into protein and fat and carbohydrate. When we absorb carbohydrate and our blood glucose levels start to tend to rise, we make a hormone called insulin from our pancreas, and that brings the blood glucose level back down to the normal range. If you have diabetes, unfortunately, your pancreas stops working, so it's not able to make that insulin anymore. And as a result, your blood glucose levels tend to rise out of control. After being monitored throughout the day, the decision is made to admit her overnight. What precipitated Alex coming into a &E is that she'd become unwell. So she developed what we'd all call a tummy bug. She had some vomiting and wasn't able to therefore eat properly. And when somebody with diabetes is vomiting, it's a little more challenging than, than the rest of us because if you have diabetes, you do require insulin to keep your blood glucose levels in the normal range, but then you also have to balance that with some carbohydrates so that your blood glucose levels don't fall too low. Yeah. 
She was extremely pale, had a tummy pain, and really wasn't able to eat anything, and had vomited a lot before she came in. With the diabetes, because you have to give her a certain amount of glucose in term, to, to, get to balance her insulin, we felt it was probably just easier to give her the fluids overnight. Rory is asleep and surgery has begun. Um, in terms of the procedure, it's a day case procedure, so they're in and out within the day and don't even necessarily spend the whole day here unless they've got, um, you know, vomiting or some problems after the procedure. He was just asleep for about 10 minutes and during that time made a little cut in the eardrum and sucked out any fluid that was there and put in a little tube called a grommet. Uh, to try and stop that problem occurring again. It's a very common procedure, but it can be very effective, particularly in children with Rory's condition. Um, in his case, his hearing should be back to normal immediately. Any speech problems he may have will take a little longer uh, to resolve. Just after waking up there now. Still a, bit, still a bit sleepy, are you? Yeah. <laughs> from all the staff on the day ward in Temple Street. That springs are brave. You can hang that up at home now. The next morning, after recovering well overnight, Alex is also on the way home. Hi, Gran. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> what are you? Well, Alex. How did you get on last night? I was fine. Yeah? Are you ready to come home? Yes. And see your Hello, uncle here on. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. We missed you. <laughs> Bonnie coming home too? She was on a drip all day long. So they just had to keep her in for the night just to get her, get her bloods up and stuff like because her, her bloods were low and her, and that because she wasn't eating. Yeah, so she couldn't have her at home like, you know. So hopefully now she's been on the drip for 24 hours. So hopefully now we'll be getting her home. You don't really sleep like, you know, because of somebody in every hour check, you know, doing the bloods and stuff. So you don't really, you're kind of, are you, you know, that's part of the <laughs> part of it like. What, what we gave to Alex when she came in was fluids, so because she got a little bit dehydrated because of her condition. So we gave her some IV fluids, we gave her some glucose in the fluids that she was getting, so that balanced the insulin nicely, and then that allowed us to give her extra insulin. And the extra insulin cleared those ketones very quickly, and then once that, all that sort of whole cycle of decompensation was reversed, then she completely perked up, and, so, and then she obviously also got over her, these tummy bugs tend to be quite short-lived, and got over that, and went, once then she was back to herself, back to normal the next morning, her blood's completely returned to normal. I'd go on some of the spray. It won't hurt you. Oh. I will take it. <laughs> this is the magic one. Have you got this one before? Yeah. Brilliant, isn't it? What are you going to do now for the rest of the day? Go on outside garden. in my pyjamas. <laughs> Aren't you? To check on your sunflowers? Yeah. You're so lucky. Can I go and study you? Mm. No. no. <laughs> this is a ketone. It's a little thing and it's mean because it makes you sick. I'm going home. A week later, Mark returns to Temple Street. Following successful heart surgery, the team were able to investigate his airway. They were able to bring him to the operating room and they were able to visualize his trachea. 
it is a weakness of the wall, but the, the, it is not a stricture, it's not a rigid, like an hourglass narrowing of the trachea. So what this means for him is that uh, going forward is that we have to reassess to how we're going to deal with that. He, he will have quite um, acute or, or, or quite involved care for the next few months to years. Several weeks before Mark was, was born, um, we knew we had th there were some difficulties because he wasn't growing as quickly as his brother. And uh, the team in, in, in Cork, they had to do quite a bit of work to, uh, to, to try and prolong the pregnancy to uh, 35 weeks because they wanted to, uh, to give him as much um, of a chance as, as they could. The first 24 hours uh, after Mark and Aaron um, were, were, were born were, were very, um, you know, quite traumatic. The, the consultants have always, you know, given us that, that, that hope at different times. And as I say, the, the pediatrician doctors we, we've had have, you know, they laid out. And they're, they're often not able to, I mean, nobody can say what's going to happen in the future. I mean, Mark ultimately is deciding a lot of these things himself on, on how he's going to react to the treatments but um, the, ho the hope is key um, and you know the, the, the chaplain team here in Temple Street have just been fantastic to us as well you know just to, to come and, and sit with us and pray with us at times has been, has been another source of, um, of comfort. I mean obviously we're praying for for, for, for Mark and, 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 and for the family and I, I guess for, for Mary and I, we're, um, we're praying for strength to be able to, um, to, to get through this and for the doctors and the medical team here that, that they're able to, um, you know, they're able to, to take all of the signals that Mark is giving them and, and, uh, and, and, and work through that. We don't look too far into the future. I don't think it's wise to look too far into the future. Um, you know the saying, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Um, and, and I think with, with, with Mark over the last few months, um, you really have to take it one day at a time. You know, families are just tremendous in, in how they've come together and, uh, and helped us uh, to be able to get through this because without them, uh, you know, we wouldn't be able to, um, to spend the time with Mark that we need to.